Okay. Are you visible now? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. At the outset, my sincere thanks to AIOS and Dr. Nambrata for this opportunity. Next few minutes, I'll be talking on difficult situations that is the management of recurrent area. So we all know that recurrent TGM presents a significant surgical problem. Although there are many surgical options, the gold standard is that TGM decision with colonial orthograph. But this method sometimes results in even high recurrence in a recurrent TGM. So whenever we are doing this procedure, we should add some other procedures like that. We have to go for adjuvant therapy or go for other things that we'll be discussing in the next few slides. In this case, there will be corneal table for shortening shortening or single parent formation, which causes because of multiple surgeries, and that leads to challenging situation. And this surgery should be done by some experienced surgeons because repeated surgical interventions in the limbal area may lead to destruction of the barrier function and sometimes lead to a serialicity with consequent blindness. So this can be treated by two ways. That is, first is by suppression of the subconjunctival fibrosis, and then second is by reconstruction of the limbal barrier. So fibrosis can be suppressed by use of anti-metabolites or anti-inflammatory agents, or by by some use of anti vegetables Transplantation of amniotic, amniotic membrane is also helpful to re, uh, to reduce the fibrosis. Barrier, barrier function can be restored by using conjunctival autograph, conjunctival limbal autograph, lamellar keratoplasty, keratoepitheloplasty, and recently by slate. So we all know that corticosteroids are well-known anti-inflammatory agents that can be used topically or subconjunctively to prevent or decrease the postoperative inflammation, neovascularization, and fibroblastic activity. FabFU is an antifibrotic agent that inhibits DNA synthesis and thereby decreases fibroblastic activity. Trimucinolone is an intermediate-acting steroid that also decreases the fibroblastic activity and usually given as 20 milligram in cases of recurrences. So, Prabhaswat et al. evaluated the efficacy of uh, subconjunctival uh, fibrofluorouracil and trimucinolone injection in impending recurrent TGM. In his series, there are 104 cases. He divided in three groups. So, one is control group, one for is uh, with FIBFU group where they used the subconjunctival FIBFU. Uh, that means this is, that was given uh, 5 milligram with one week apart two doses, and another is this steroid groups where they give this interleucinal steroids, trimucinolone acetonoid, that is 20 milligram, one injection. And they found that interleucinal injections of either 5-BPU or 3-A effectively stops the progression of impending recurrent pterygium, results in an impressive appearance at the surgical site and helps to avoid repeated surgery. And the outcome is satisfactory and complications are not severe and reversible. Complications means that few patients develop steroid-induced glaucoma or epithelopathy, which are reversible. Mitomycin C is an alkylating agent that reduces recurrences by inhibiting fibrovascular growth. And it is shown to be an useful adjunct to the regime surgery. But unfortunately, it should be used very judiciously because it can be having some sort of epithelial toxicity and sometimes lead to Corneal melt. These are the patients who had this uh, emergency applications without any, uh, that means in gas keratinic without any corneal autograph. So there is no clear consensus what is the percentage of on the emergency to be used and how much duration to be used. But most of the studies say that an intraoperative single dose of low concentration mitomycin C, that is 0.02% for two minutes, shown to be effective in reducing recurrences while diminishing the risk of serious complications. Wang and Law reported the combination of simple CAG and mitomycin C 0.5 mg per milliliter for one minute with a recurrence rate of 9% of the steroidal necrosis. Management of recurrence pterygium with intraoperative mitomycin C 0.02% for two minutes and CAG with fibrin glue recurrence rate is 3.5%. That, that is the practice done by you here. anti treatments, and it has been shown that there is angiogenesis during TGM formation and progression. And there is elevated expression of many pro-angiogenic factors like uh, uh, PJ, fibroblastic group factor 2, TNF alpha, and that have been observed in recurrent TGM, resulting in excessive neovascularization. So among the pro-angiogenic factors, VJF is likely the most crucial factor and is an attractive therapeutic target 
So anti-phagic therapy may potentially suppress revascularization in pterygium, preventing or retarding the progression of recurrence. These are the patients. With these patients, just uh, after, after six, within six months of recurrence, and then given this bevacizumab, and this is the result after just after the injection. Bevacizumab, a recombinant humanized non-monoclonal antibody, anti against VEGF. Then that is uh, this is an off-label treatment for pterygium. But nonetheless, the results remain inconclusive. Now again, this comes this ranizumab, subtenone injection of ranizumab arrests growth in early recurrent pterygium, and subtenone delivery point 5 to 2 milligram of ranizumab at day at first day at day month at month one and month two, and see this this hospitalization has been received this up to the day of surgery. This is after one week and this is after three months, and in half of the subjects subtenone ranizumab. It appeared to be arrest the growth, although the response is variable, may or end the drugs used to control growth of recurrent pterygia and may prevent consecutive surgery in some patients, those who are not willing for further surgery. But we should remember that the cost-benefit ratio and where in our hospital we never use this as a treatment for recurrent pterygia. So for just theoretical purpose, anti vegf agents, bevacizumab, that is bevacizumab, 0.25 milligram, 0.1 ml, and ran 0.5 to 2 milligram for both primary and different region. And if we use steroids, sometimes we have used it, that is 1 ml, ml 20 milligram for a current region, and it is used just behind the limbus intralisinal. So now, uh, role of amniotic membrane. Amniotic membrane has anti scarring, anti angiogenic, and anti inflammatory properties. It removes the need for harvesting large autographs thereby minimizes the iatrogenic injury to the rest of the conjunctival surface and may be useful in indicated pterygium where conjunctival autograft cannot be harvested. We should know that amniotic transplantation is associated with unacceptably high recurrence rate compared with conjunctival autograft. And it should be always that when combined with some other procedures like use of mitomycin C or some sort of conjunctival autograft like that. So this is my video. This is a case of recurrent pterygium, and patient uh, had this fundamental autograft earlier. So here the key of this, this, this is that first we have to go for uh, superficial dissection. First, we have to go for superficial dissection and then go for deeper dissections. And then this, by using blunt instruments, we have to remove the heat of the pterygium. And then go for diamond bar polishing. Then all sorts of subconjunctival fibrosis should be removed. Here, we, I have used this uh, mitomycin C also. We have to separate the rectal muscles and then all sorts of heart tissue around the rectus should be freed. Then I took the graft. This is just a small graft, just to have this limbal barrier function. And it is just uh, used in the limbal area. And then the rest of the area is remaining free, so that scleral bed is remaining free. and it is fixed by using fibrin group. Now I'm taking amniotic membrane. This is placed over the scleral bed. This is passed in the donor area and then over the scleral bed beyond the limbal lot of graft.
in all these cases, even if you use also fibrin glue, we have to suture by using seven of eight field sutures because sometimes because of lead movement, there may be displacement of the magnetic membrane. Then a bandage control seems or poop. This is immediate post-op and post-op 10 days. And after one month and after four months, there was no recurrence. So now we all know that this uh, there is UV related damage to the limbal stem cells, and that leads to pterygium formation. And this limbus is supposed to be a distinct cellular structure between the cornea and the congenital epithelium. And stem cells serve as a proliferative barrier between corneal and congenital epithelial. That way, it prevents the growth of the congenital over the congenital epithelium onto the cornea through contact inhibition. So, Shamo and Italy in 2012 described the uh, technique of SLED, that is, simple limbal epithelial transplantation, as a technique for the treatment of limbal stem cell deficiency. And by, uh, that, by that thought, Bogantis et al. first described mini slate techniques. And in their cases, out of 10 cases, all of them are having good results without any recurrence. And they hypothesized that addition of stem cells contained in the slate pieces could reduce recurrence and improve the cosmetic outcome. Now, slate is also a novel surgical option for the treatment of recurrent pterygium. And uh, this, this was first, uh, that means published by Jale Mednik et al. And in their cases, only four cases were, uh, that means, uh, they did four cases of recurrent pterygium with slate, and there was no recurrence again. And the procedure addresses a key pathological process in pterygium development and should be considered in aggressive and recurrent cases. So this is a case of uh, that recurrent pterygium that I, I did this slate. Again, this patient underwent uh, this onion uh, graft. So I had to take this slate piece from the other eye. In all the cases, I have to use this mitomycin C for two minutes, 0.02%. And then amniotic membrane was placed over the bear sclera. Again, as I mentioned that in all these cases, I have to use some uh, big sutures to secure the amniotic membrane. Now I'm taking from other eye this three millimeter limbal biopsy tissue. Then did do your cart have to six pieces. And then put in the limbal area. So many surgeons, they, they put this, uh, trans, uh, this transplants in this area. This just near to the uh, that limbus area. But sometimes it may dislodge. So I have just put inside the limbus.
and uh, this patient lost follow up because of this lockdown but patients did uh, tele consultations and patient is doing fine now so to call surgery in the current area is more difficult and sometimes the manual autograph transplantation remains the best option for the management of advanced advanced stage and primary both primary and recurrent cases <laughs> Isolation of the rectal muscles and meticulous dissection of the scar tissue around the muscle is the key for success. And it should be performed best by an experienced doctor or surgeon. Thank you. Thank you.